I can't promise everybody we're going to save America. We're going right. to prevent the left from taking over. What I can promise you that it is that if we do our duty, God will take care of the results, whatever they may be. Hey, everyone. This is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. This week, we have another replay from the Homegrown Generation Family Expo. This one is the session I did with Rick Green. And if you guys missed it, oh, man, this was one of the best sessions that we did that week. Well, they were all really good, but this one was really good because it was called Hope is Alive. And in this episode, Rick is talking about practical ways to restore families, the church, and our republic. And he is just, if, if you've not listened to Rick, he is one of those people who is so energetic and and just um, exudes the love of Jesus. And he really, he has so much hope and he passes that hope on to us. And we need that hope in the world in which we're living. So I know you're going to be encouraged by it. If you listened to this already through the Homegrown Generation Family Expo, um, I know you're going to enjoy listening to it once again, because that was several months ago. So be encouraged by it once again. If you missed the Homegrown Generation Family Expo, it was our online conference that we did back in April, and you still can have full access to that conference. Just go to homegrowngeneration.com. And for $15, you can sign up and have access to the entire conference, as well as the conference we did back in 2020. Um, and the one that we did in 2020 had a, a, an incredible lineup of speakers as well. So homegrowngeneration.com. Um, be encouraged by this uh, message from Rick. But before we roll back into that, I want to say thank you again to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com. Try them out for free, ctcmath.com. Now enjoy this message from Rick Green. Every time I think of what's going on in the world around us, it can get so overwhelming. And I feel like for myself, over the past three years, it's gotten even more overwhelming with COVID and the and just, you know, the election and all that's happened. And it's so easy to despair. And when I think of, of bringing hope, if anyone can do that, it is you and you always bring it from a biblical perspective. And so Rick, introduce yourself and your family to us and your ministry and tell us what it is that you do. Well, thanks for the invite. I'm, I'd go anywhere with the Hamptons, whether that's Georgia or Oklahoma or wherever else in the country. So always good to be with you. I love you guys and, and all that you're doing. Uh, you know, I, I'm, um, I, I tend to be optimistic uh, by nature. And so for me, looking at, like you're saying, the last few years and just the chaos and the destruction of the culture, I mean, it's, you know, it's hard to, you, you cannot deny that as you look around, the American culture is crumbling. I mean, that's just the truth. That's where we are. But yeah. even in the midst of that, we can look at that. And this is what the world doesn't understand. We can look at that. We can even look at the evil that is in the country, right? A lot of the stuff that's happening that the, to children and the things that they're doing, you can even look at that evil and you can be righteously angry while at the same time having joy. Now, that seems weird, like crazy, psychopathic to some people. But to us as believers, we have to be that way. We're commanded to be that way. We're told in James, count it all joy when you experience various trials. Why? Because God's using those trials to make you perfect and complete, lacking nothing. He's using it to create perseverance in you. And so even as the country is facing real challenges, in fact, I was going to jokingly start off by saying it's all over, forget it, grab your right. gun, food, go hide out at the ranch. We're done. I mean, that's how some people do it, right? That's how they right. feel about what's going on. They depress everybody. They can light up the room by leaving. Uh, right. That's not how we want to be. And in fact, that's not how we should be. We can, you know, we're facing very difficult times and we have a choice. We can be like the 10 spies, they came back with a negative report from the promised land and said the giants are too big, the cities are too fortified, we can't possibly win. The Bible tells us they depressed an entire generation that had to then die in the wilderness. What a horrible yeah. result. But there were two other guys we all know. We remember their names. We couldn't name any of the other 10, but we yep. know Joshua and Caleb yep. because Joshua and Caleb came back and said, yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, huge giants, fortified cities. It's going to be very difficult but God's given us the land. Let's go take the land. And that's our approach. That's that, I think that's the attitude we should have. And I will have, you know, even if we don't win, I can't promise everybody we're going to save America. We're going right. to prevent the left from taking over. What I can promise you that it, is that if we do our duty, God will take care of the results, whatever they may be. And he knows the plans he has for us. We love that Jeremiah mm -hmm. verse. We all have it on a pillow or a coffee <laughs> mug or something around our house, but we forget they were marching off to 70 years of captivity. When right. he told them that, and he said, build your houses, marry your wives, plant your gardens, all of those things. So no matter what happens in America politically, and you know, I've devoted my life to, to influencing that realm. That's our mission field yeah. is how the community is formed. But no matter what happens there, 
we can be joyful in knowing that God's still in control and that our job is to serve him and serve our fellow man, regardless of those outer circumstances. What makes our role so fun and exciting, what makes the homeschool movement so important right now is that we don't just get to live and exist in this. We get to be the deciding factor, I think, on whether America falls into tyranny or comes back to liberty. We're teetering mm-hmm. between the two. What a wonderful time to be alive. We don't live in pale and timid times, as Ronald Reagan said. Uh, you know, It's not pale pastels. We have bold colors. We can paint in bold colors, and we can have a huge impact on what's happening. So that's a really long intro, really long answer yeah. uh, to your question. But um, we're blessed, man. I, I just think we're still the most blessed nation in the history of the world. We still have all the best foundations uh, that any nation has ever had. It's just that we've we've neglected tending the garden. We haven't taken care yeah. of what God gave us. And, uh, and I think people are waking up to that. I think all the bad that's happened has created a window of opportunity where more people are paying attention than ever before. And more people yeah. are saying, here, my Lord, send me. I don't want my kids to live in tyranny. Tell me what to do. And so let's take advantage of that opportunity. Amen. And you homeschooled all of your kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I was homeschooled graduated. myself. You know, I, yeah, I forget right. when I, I forget to always start with that. You know, I was yeah. homeschooled back when you didn't answer the front door. We hid <laughs> under the bed when somebody knocked on the door. Uh, I can remember watching my pastor, and you know, I was probably 11 years old, watching my pastor on the news being threatened with because he was being threatened with jail because so many out of the church were homeschooling and <laughs> just crazy, crazy stuff. Right. And and um, and then, you know, when we had our kids, my our, our first our, our first kid is named Trey and and. When he was about five years old, my wife, um, who who was not homeschooled, she did public and private school. And I actually did all three. I did. I, I spent some a few years in private school, and my uh, I I ended up coming back to homeschool. Finished all of my all of my education at at like you know fifteen, and so then I went to the local public high school so that I could play baseball and and do <laughs> debate, and uh, and I had to do high school again. You know, so it was like anyway, it was crazy. But my wife um, did mostly you know private school and and public school, and so. You know, when we had Trey and he and it was time for him to supposedly, you know, go be handed off to to the to the educators down the street, she just uh, the Lord just really spoke to her and said, "He's not, you know, it's not a, it's not time for you to let go of your son. It's time for you to lean in. This is the this is where you get to do even more." And so yeah. she's the one that made the Im- initial decision uh, that, "Hey, I, I I believe we need to, we need to do this." And of course, you know, I, I love that I was already a champion for homeschooling in the Texas legislature at the time, and yeah. and uh, you know, we uh, we we have so loved our chance to homeschool. We've gotten to take our kids all over the country. Uh, they've been in almost every state, been to almost every baseball park, battlefield, <laughs> museum. Homeschooling gives you so much freedom, yeah. uh, let alone the time you get with them. So for us, it's been yeah. absolutely outstanding. And I'm thrilled that homeschooling is, you know, depending on the study, you look at doubling, tripling. Um, wonderful, wonderful to see that happen in America. Yeah, yeah, it is amazing because you are on the front lines of this battle. And, and let me just back up really quickly. Rick, you you know this, but I'll tell our audience, you hold such a special place in our family, specifically for our decision to homeschool, because almost 13 years ago, if you can believe, we went to our very first homeschool convention. It was when Brooklyn was four, and we had said we'd never homeschool. We didn't understand it. We believed all the misconceptions, all the negative stereotypes, and we said we will never do this. And by God's grace, some friends invited us to a homeschool convention in Los Angeles, which is where we lived at the time. And Rick was the keynote speaker that year. And I don't remember if it was Trey or Reagan who was up on stage with you. So 13 years ago, I don't know, they were about probably Reagan because yeah. I think he was about 10. Yeah, and, uh, he would have um, been 10 then. Yeah. Yeah. And he went up on stage and he was reciting things. And, and, and that was cool. But more importantly than that was you as the keynote speaker and just the thing, the truth that you spoke from that stage just moved us in an incredible way. And we came up out of that convention completely changed. It was mm. literally like the scales fell from our eyes mm. and we said, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to just try it for a year. This is our family and we're scared to death and we have no idea what we're doing. And we, you know, we were, we were in it but we trusted that the Lord was going to get us through it. And now here we are 12 years later, still doing this. And by God's grace, he used you to really impact us. And I know he's used you to impact so many people, not just in homeschooling, but in our nation as well. And so I want to talk about our nation, talk about our freedom. We are on. If if I could interrupt you just for a second, because I want to say, listen, the coolest thing about that is how much now you are inspiring so many families to homeschool and not just inspiring Mm -hmm. them, but equipping them. The things that y'all are doing as a family is multi your for your true force multiplier. So when I'm out there talking about 
saving the country and the Constitution and all that. I'm always using that word, force multiplier, and encouraging people, or that phrase, and encouraging people to do that. You guys are actually doing that. I mean, you are such a good example of not just being blessed by the, the freedom that we have and being able to homeschool, but then turning around and using that and multiplying it, yeah. just like in the parable of the talent. So well done, man. I'm just so, I'm wow. so thankful for what y'all are doing. Thank you for saying that. It is truly all by the grace of God. And and you know that um, it's it's not easy, but it is fun because we're doing what the Lord's called us to do. Amen. And so it is truly a blessing. You're like Eric Liddell, you know, the Olympian yeah, that said, oh, when yeah. I run, I feel God's pleasure. Yep. You're running where God, in the lane God wants you. And, yeah. and I, I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah. And awful. everybody has a lane. It's not that your lane has to be. That's right. That's right. Homeschool leadership. You know, we talked about yeah. this in one of our sessions today. It could be changing diapers and speaking the Amen. truth of God's word into the, the ears of your babies. Amen. Amen. It can be anything, however God chooses to use you. It's just, yes. he's, for whatever reason, I've often asked why he's <laughs> chosen us to do this. And yeah. it is truly a privilege to serve him in whatever aspect he has opened up for us. And so, um, so yeah, it's exciting to do his work. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are on a battlefield that is fierce. I, I, every day, you know, when you open up the news, when you read posts on Facebook, when you just see what's going on around us, anyone who doesn't think that we're in a battle, their head is buried in the sand on purpose. Yeah. They are purposely ignoring what's going on around us. But anyone who's looking around is going, you know, that there's just something not right, something not right about our culture, something not right about the sin in the world that is being celebrated. And so our job as parents is to equip our kids to fight for team Jesus. We keep talking yeah. about that. You know, Jesus is the team captain. We're on his team and we need to be fighting on this team, but we have to be equipped in order to be able to do that. And we have to have the hope of knowing that our team is going to win. And so the good news is we know how it ends, right? Yeah. We've read revelation. We know how this fight ends, but Rick, how do we get there? And let's talk specifically about us as a culture and as a nation, how do we equip our kids to fight this fight on this battlefield? How do we give them hope and how do we ourselves have hope to be able to fight this? Yeah. You know, um, I, the first thing I'd say is exactly just to repeat a little bit of what you just said, we face a fierce battle. We cannot be naive or Pollyanna about what's happening in the country. There are evil. There are forces of evil that want your children. Yeah. It's that bad. They want to destroy your family. They want to destroy our country and they are winning. They are winning the culture war. At least they have been, I believe we've stopped them in their tracks and I think we have a chance to push them back, but they have been winning for a while. Yeah. Um, and these are people that want to, I mean, let's be blunt, mutilate your kids, mm -hmm. change your kids, value system. They want to steal your children for the enemy and they are doing it to families all over the nation. And they now hold, this is the bad part. They hold the levers on virtually every power switch in the country. In other words, they control the institutions mm -hmm. of America. They control education completely other than homeschooling. Right. They control uh, government at virtually every level, state and federal, definitely within the agencies and the kind of what we would call the swamp. It's the, you know, it's the, it's the nebulous bureaucracies where these are unelected people, but they're, they can harass you at any moment, right? Uh, they control that. They control entertainment. They control uh, journalism. They control the media. So I, and I don't say that to depress anybody at all. See, eyes wide open. This is where we are. This is what we face. These are the giants in the land that we are facing. And so then we look at that and we have a choice. We can either put our head in the sand, like you said, and just say, well, I don't even want to think about it. I'm just going to look inside, you know, only my four walls of, and, and not look outside. The problem is they won't leave you alone. They will come within your four walls. And so we can no longer be, uh, you know, Proverbs 27, 12 says the, the, the wise person foresees danger and takes precaution. The simpleton or the fool walks blindly on and suffers the consequences. In many ways, we as the church have been the simpleton. We have walked and enjoyed the blessings of liberty. We've been able to just, you know, do whatever we wanted, uh, enjoy our freedom, worship as we choose. Nobody challenged any of that. And so, you know, we got kind of spoiled about it and we didn't have to fight for it. Very few people in this country have had to fight for the liberty that we that we enjoy today. And so by being the simpleton now, 
we're, we're suffering the consequences. The culture's crumbling, yeah. as we said, around us. So now we have a chance to become the wise person and take precaution. And, and, and the number one precaution, the number one responsibility we all have is for our own kids and our own family. And yeah. that's why getting your kid out of a system that's poisoning them and, and, and trying to literally steal them from you and into a system where everything you can you believe can be reinforced and your kid is given the best um, uh, the best chance possible for success in life, for joy in life, for a relationship with the Lord, um, you know, all of those things. And, and that's why, why I'm such an advocate for, and didn't not only we homeschooled our four kids all the way through, but why I want as many people as possible to do the exact same thing. So we're very, very, very passionate about that. So that's number one, but you have to go beyond that because yeah. otherwise you won't have the freedom to even do that. And some of our viewers today are probably in states where they have far less freedoms than you have in Oklahoma and I have in, in Texas with regard to homeschooling their kids. And they have to deal with a lot more hoops or regulations or whatever. And trust me, anybody watching today in any state in the United States at any time, any state legislature could come after you and they could try to outlaw or could outlaw homeschooling or create all kinds of hurdles. The federal government could try to do it. I mean, we're at a time where you have to be vigilant and be involved to prevent that stuff from happening. Thankfully, in almost every state, we have really good homeschool associations that mm -hmm. are constantly watching those bills, constantly right. involved in getting people elected to the legislature so that there's champions in the legislature watching those bills and preventing that kind of thing from happening. So we, we cannot, I guess it's a really long answer to your question, is that we, we, we must eyes wide open, look at the challenge, realize it's there. We cannot ignore it. We cannot sit on the sideline. We absolutely should not get depressed and give up and say, well, that's too big. I can't change it or it's going to take too long. We have to have a generational view. It's not going to change overnight. I think I say this all the time. I think we're in for, you know, it's going to get even worse before it gets better because yeah. it's garbage in, garbage out. We're living with the consequences of those bad decisions for decades and decades. And so what do we do now? We start good, putting the good stuff in so that five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, maybe even when you and I are dead and gone, our kids can enjoy the benefit, right? And, and like you said, in Revelation, we know, we know who wins, but we don't know when they win. Right. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. Every generation thought he was coming back in their generation, <laughs> you know? And so it'd be much easier for me to get, get on here tonight and say, or today and say, you know what? Hope is alive because Jesus is going to come back and take us all to heaven. So everybody just go hide in your basement and right. uh, and, and and don't worry. You know, the Lord's going to take, that'd be a whole lot easier, right? Or right. he's coming back next year. You know, and how many times have, has some evangelists claimed they knew exactly <laughs> when Jesus was coming back? Nobody knows. Jesus right. said, no man no knows, knows today. So it may be a hundred years. It may be two weeks from now. It may be another thousand years. Um, all I know is he told me to occupy until he returns. He told us right. to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and our, and Caesar in our nation is us. We are looking at mm. Caesar right now. And so he's given us everything we need yeah. in a free society to influence the culture around us in a positive way. But if the salt stays in the shaker, the culture rots, the meat rots. If the salt's not there, the meat spoils. If the salt's there, not only does is the meat uh, preserved, but it tastes better. It's, it brings yeah. out the best flavor, and not just for the Christians, but everybody in the community. That's the beauty of Christian influence in a culture. The Muslim benefits, the atheist benefits, everybody that lives in that society benefits if we're being true salt and light. And so on one hand, it's bad, and we need to recognize that. On the other hand, we have what we need to fight. We have what we need to invest in our in our uh, freedom and our liberty and our families. Uh, whether or not, you know, what the outcome's going to be, that we don't get to know, right? Duty is ours, results are God's. Uh, but I see a lot of good results already happening. I, I think this window we're in where more people are paying attention than ever before is a beautiful time to be alive. And and a lot of the people that, that you know, are doing your conference are first-time homeschoolers, first time maybe even really around, you know, crazy faith people like us, right? And they're going, <laughs> well, what is this joy these people have? Something's wrong with them. Well, you know, that's the joy of the Lord. And, and that's yeah. the other thing is just knowing that our, our hope, when we say hope is alive, we don't have hope in a presidential candidate. We don't have hope in a political party. Our hope is in whose we are, not where we are, and the fact that we know his principles don't change. That's why I am I can confidently go talk to a group of legislators and say, here's a policy that if you pass this, it's going to be good for the neighborhood, good for the culture, good for the society, because it's proven to us throughout history. And, and, and so our hope is in the fact that his principles work. The laws of nature, nature's God, as they said in the Declaration of Independence. Um, it, it's a it's a proven set of of not just freedom principles, but biblical freedom yeah. principles that produce incredible results. And so we can have hope in knowing God's still in charge. His yep. principles haven't changed. And if we'll implement them, we can get some good results. Right. And he gives us all that we need to know through his word. It's Amen. not a secret. He hasn't hidden it from us.
I want to back up really quickly because you were talking about being salt, being salt and light, right? And as you know, that's one of the arguments that so many people use. I know recently there was there was someone on, um, I want to say Jen Wilkins, it's her name, something like that from Gospel Coalition. And she was talking about how people need to have their kids in the public school because they need to be, oh, they, they need this. to love their neighbors. I, right. I don't think she went down the salt and light road, but she said, we need to love our neighbors. And so people will pull that into the, the you know, reasoning for not homeschooling. We have to have our kids in the public schools because they have to be salt and light and we need to love our neighbors. Speak on that for a minute. Why don't we put our kids in public school to be salt and light there? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, to, to your point about um, all the answers being in the Bible, I just want to make sure we emphasize that. You know, the number one thing you can do to save freedom, to save our country, yeah. is being God's Word. Because without the truth, um, we lose. And and nine percent, nine percent of Christians are in God's Word every day. So uh, that means ninety one percent aren't. So we, we've got a lot of work to do there for all of us. All of us. Yeah. I need to do more. I need to be there more. That's where the answers are. And uh, and man, I could give you a million founding fathers quotes on that and why the Bible itself creates a good society. And when yes. we neglect the precepts of the Bible, we get crime and slavery and war and all those things. When we follow the precepts of the Bible, we get a whole lot less of, of all of those things. So I just wanted to, you, you yeah. hit the most important thing that if anybody takes away from this, if they want to have hope and enjoy freedom, be in God's word, everything Amen. else will, 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 will flow um, out of that. But yeah, I heard this and I, and I thought, you know, when did we decide that sacrificing our kids, sending a 10 year old into the lion's den to defend the culture or the society or to be the salt and light made any sense or an eight-year-old, frankly, even a 15-year-old these days yeah. with what's going on in our in our high schools in America. Um, of course, we're supposed to be salt and light and we're supposed to go out into the world and, and witness and share and be, uh, you know, in that uh, arena, be in, in the world, but out of the world, all that good stuff. That That's culturally and as a family, that does not mean sending off your eight or 10 year old and hoping that they can stand up against a 40 year old teacher that is trying to convert them to, to, to a, you know, uh, completely secular mindset and to evil ideas about sexuality and everything else. Um, I, I heard about this and I thought, how simplistic, how foolish can somebody be? to put a guilt trip on Christians to think that they're supposed to sacrifice their children on the right. altar of being nice to the neighbor. Uh, I, I was greatly offended in that. And I, and I, I shouldn't say that because I didn't listen to the whole podcast. Um, but, but I have heard this for years and years and years. I can't pull, I'm not supposed to pull my kids out because then who else would evangelize, um, at the school? And I, and I, and I'm thinking, you know, we do a lot of self-defense training, as you know, mm -hmm. and, and treat people, teach people how to physically defend your family as well. And not only in this culture, but in any culture, you're going to have crime. And, and that's again, the, not being the simpleton, being the wise person. And, and one of our, one of our things that we teach is you don't, you don't, I'm not going to let my house burn down to save yours. In other words, right. I, I have, you put the mask on yourself first before you try to save the children. I hate even thinking about put the mask on. So right. you know, you know how much of an anti-masker I am, but the, the oxygen mask, let me be clear right. on the, uh, on the airplane, uh, before you go to the next person. And it's the same thing here. We're to raise our warriors, our family, mm -hmm. and and some people watching their kid at eighteen might be ready to go off to a, uh, you know, to a to a to a university and and be ready to defend the faith and be. But honestly, these days, I mean, I, I got one kid that that did secular university so far, and first he did Liberty, did his undergrad. Uh, you know, Trey, he he mm -hmm. did his undergrad at seventeen years old. He had his bachelor's in in uh, economics, but then he did a master's at Texas A and M. And, and Trey's my, you know, firstborns are, are like this a lot. I mean, he was, you know, so I had no concern with any, nobody was going to influence him. He was going to influence them, but that's rare. That's really, really rare. And, um, I, I think parents have to be ultra careful about those college decisions because yeah. that's, it, it, you know, this was a master's degree. It's very different. He's only there a couple hours and he was, you know, totally different situation, but most in, in, in an undergraduate degree, you're talking about sending them there for four or five years where it's not just the professors that are so usually arrogant woke. and woke and, and, yeah condescending and and all that it's it's the atmosphere it's all of those things yeah and you're asking your kid to to stand against that uh i just i just think that's i think you got that's a rare scenario where a kid is ready for that kind of thing um yeah. and that's why i'm not a big fan of college anyway there's only a few degrees that i think are worth going and <laughs> going and getting but we anyway all of that just to had say, this conversation with israel wayne you, earlier today and he said the exact same oh, thing so if you I guys are israel. seeing a pattern that's, that's here thing. we're usually on the same page I hope you've been encouraged by part one of my interview with Rick Green from the Homegrown Generation Family Expo. Stay tuned to the very end of this podcast to hear what's coming up on the next episode of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast with Rick Green. Um, you guys, if you have not yet joined the Homegrown Generation Family Expo, you still can sign up for it, like I said at the beginning. 
For only $15, you can have access to the entire conference. Go to homegrowngeneration.com. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Education is discipleship and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. Let's all agree there is nothing, if I ask the question this way, what part of your life should the Lord not be Lord over? Mm. And it, the answer should be none. Yeah. And that means the way we treat our neighbor and how we form our societies, what our governorship looks like, what our legislature looks like, what our church looks like, what our business looks like. The Bible speaks to all of it. And we're supposed to be the ones that make disciples of all nations. And if we're not willing to scratch and claw and, and, and show up and protest and show mm -hmm. up and march and show up and testify and do those kind of things, the, the other side's gonna run over us.